In this video, we'll be talking about seasonality and what it means for a time series to have a seasonal component. So I realized that we've already thrown around this word seasonality a little bit, talking about what defines white noise or what defines stationarity. And you probably understand what seasonality generally means just from an everyday usage. But I want to take a whole video dedicated to just explaining what time series uh, defines as seasonality. So the setup is that you're an ice cream vendor and you track your ice cream sales over time. So here's 2015, 16, 17, 18, and Y is your sales of ice cream. Of course, as we would expect in the middle of each year, so around the summer when it's really hot, everybody wants your ice cream. And then when it gets to winter, of course, your ice cream sales drop because people don't want it as much. So we see that this has a very clear seasonal component. We see these uh, these highs in the summer, the lows in the winter, and this happens pretty much every year. Of course, every year is not exactly the same, but there's that general trend, okay? And that's what seasonality means in time series. It's a repeating pattern within a year. And this is an important distinction to make. So it needs to be within a year to be seasonality. Um, so for example, there's something else in time series called a cycle which is a very similar kind of idea, but it's not the same because that takes place over the course of years, and that's also not predictable. We'll talk about that very briefly at the end of this video. So, of course, that is what seasonality is. Of course, uh, in here we see it's yearly. It can also be weekly, right? So within the seven days of the week, maybe you see spikes every Wednesday uh, for some reason. Maybe you see dips every Thursday. It can also be monthly. Maybe you see an increased usage of your product in the beginning of each month, and then it trails off at the end of the month. So it doesn't really matter what the pattern looks like, as long as there is a repeating pattern, a predictable repeating pattern within a year. That's what seasonality uh, means in the context of time series. The second topic we'll talk about in this video is how to remove seasonality. So if you remember from our stationarity video, if a time series has a seasonal component, it's not stationary, which means we cannot just use our AR, or MA, or ARMA models as they are. So that means we would really, really like to remove the seasonal component from a time series so that we can use that new time series, which, which does not have seasonality, and use our models on it, okay? Turns out removing seasonality, there's a lot of ways to do it. Here's a very basic way that ties into this chart right here. What do we know about this chart? We know that within each year, if we were to take any arbitrary day within a year, let's say I take the uh, 300th day of the year, which would be around there, right? Almost at the end of the year. If I take the 300th day of 2017, 300th day of 2018, I'm expecting them to kind of have the same value because of the definition of seasonality, because there is that repeating pattern. So if I transform my time series, instead of having Y, which is the time series itself, if I do Y at T plus 365 minus Y sub T, what that basically means is I'm taking this value and from it, I'm subtracting the value that was 365 days ago then I'll be able to eliminate the seasonality because my new series is basically just taking that original time series and getting and matching up point by point these values so that I'm getting rid of the seasonal component. Hopefully that makes sense to you, okay? And of course, uh, the thing about Z sub T is that we don't have any data for this whole first year because for this equation to make sense, uh, we need T to be at least zero, which means that Y needs to at least start at Y365. So our first Z timestamp will be the first of 2016 minus the first of 2015. So we do lose out on this whole year right here. So that's one way to remove seasonality from a time series. And then you can go ahead and check if it's stationary and use your ARMA models on it. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the last thing we'll talk about is seasonality versus cycles. So this is something a lot of students get mixed up on, which is that seasonality is this concept we just explained up here. It's distinct, it's different from the idea of cycles. So cycles are more like uh, trends that happen over the course of several years. So here is a time series that has cyclical behavior. We see that from 2015, 16, and 17, it has this trend of going up and then it kind of goes down. Uh, and then from uh, 2017, 2018, it has this short period of going down and then climbing back up. Um, the other thing about cycles is that they're not really predictable. So the first cycle here took about two and a half years. The next cycle here took about maybe one or one and a half years. So cycles are also components of time series which go up and down over time. But the, dif uh, the distinction between them and seasonal components is that cycles are not as uh, predictable as seasonality would be. And they generally take place over the course of years rather than within a year. Okay. 
So of course, we'll make some future videos on how to model seasonality in your time series. But this was just a brief introduction to what is seasonality, how do I get rid of it, and how is it different from cycles. Okay, so until next time.